I even, I even apologize to even the ladies who are in my music videos. It's just that I don't have access to those channels. I would have deleted all of those songs. Because right now when I look back, Aww. it was all fun and games. But this, this is someone's daughter. This is going to be someone's future mom. I was calling, when I'm calling like Vixens to come, I was like, you know, you have to wear something short. It has to be booty. It has to be sexy. You have to be twerking. And I'm like, can you add some sexiness? Can you? I want you to look at the mindset which I had. This is someone's daughter. But then again, because it's not my daughter. It's not my niece. It's not, I do not know you. You are trying to make ends meet. Then I'm going to exploit you. If I need to pay you to do that, well and good. There is a lot of witchcraft. There is a lot of rituals which are being done. You don't just get to the top. E or to evil. You don't. It's either God lifts you or the devil. That's why even Jesus Aliambiwanini bow to me and I'll give you everything. So if you want everything, the fame, the money, the material things, the enemy is willing to give you as long as you win souls for his kingdom. Mm. You take people where? That side. Yeah. So there is that. So I feel like it's important for people to be more aware of the things they consume in the name of entertainment. So you yeah. are using more than 40K in yeah, a month. Yeah, there's a season for like, uh, I think almost six months I was doing the glutathione and they are quite expensive. Yes. Especially the injections, even the powders and the, the products, the, the oil, the lotions and oils and all of that. Then after that, I was doing others in Yazdukwanga, like around maybe 20 to buy like the whole thing, 20 to 25, sometimes yeah. 30,000, depending if you need for knuckles and all of that. For how many years? I bleach, I think, almost three years. Three years. Three or four. When you have these experiences all the time, you're meeting people in addiction. They're so young and you're like, if this is when you're starting, I don't even know where you'll be in the next, maybe by the mm. time you're 20. Because mm. six years is a lot of time if you're doing yes. this right now and you're struggling with it, you know. Just having those interactions and they, they, they taught me something and... Um, it's either I can choose to ignore what's happening around yes. me and I can choose to pursue what I want, you know, my own ambitions mm. and just use the influence that I have to make money. That is easy to do. It was so easy for me to remain the way I was. Changing was the hardest thing. So I say this, love is beautiful, but love cannot sustain a relationship. Mm. You wake up one day, you no longer love that person. Do I have capacity to still be in their life? Do I still see us together? That's Am deep. I willing to do the work? That's so it's deep. not even about... I think getting into a relationship is so it's easy. It's the easiest thing. Ah, it's the easiest. Staying in one and sustaining one. Uh, and just not sustaining. Sustaining a thriving relationship. And a healthy one. And a healthy one. A ah, very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Googie. Now, it's only when I attended a class by Pastor C with my guest today that I realized how deep she is. And I told her, do you know you're really deep? And she's like, well, I know. Okay. Now, guys, and I really hope her story really encourages you because I've observed her. I've gone through interviews that she's done before. I've been inspired by her. And I'm telling you, when they say you know how people just come out and they're like oh now i'm born again guys and i've changed i've completely changed and then you see them again after a week doing separate things and we are not judging here but for me it's her ability to maintain and just lay a strong foundation for her faith that really inspired me to have her on today's conversation she i asked her what do you want us to talk about and she said almost anything lean i know a lot about her but I do not want to speak on her behalf. So I'm about to let her introduce herself and take us through her story. But before I do that, guys, you know, I have to pay bills. Allow me to talk to you about our incredible partners of today's conversation, Kings Developers Limited. By now, you all know. And if you don't know, um, I, I, I'll walk you through it. It's a real estate company that has beautiful, beautiful, incredible apartments. Their offices are at Upper Hill. Prism Towers, you all know the magnificent building. They own that and they have beautiful apartments across the country and you can pay them a visit and they are very ISO certified so that you do not get conned in the process. I've always said for me to bring partners in this show, I have to do a lot of due diligence because I don't want 10 years down the line, you guys, you quote my name somewhere and say, I am the one who sent you to go and get scammed. So if I'm talking to you about 
about a partner, it's because I've really done my work. So if you are looking into investing, why don't you pay them a visit and also to say thank you. We are almost at 800k subscribers. I do not take you guys for granted. Asante Nisana and also my team who puts this work together. Thank you so much. And now without further ado, please allow me to let this beautiful lady introduce herself. Mama, good morning. Good morning. What a see morning. We are filming <laughs> <Yeah>. this. <laughs> We are filming this in the afternoon. Yeah. I'm so it sorry I kept you waiting. No, Ahala, you know, Lord, the Lord has been training me to be more patient with things. I was like, you know, yeah, another lesson. It's okay. Another it. so, how, yeah. is, how is that working for you? I think it's interesting. I feel like it's a, it's a very interesting journey. I'm yeah. just looking forward to seeing the end and, mm -hmm. you know, the final outcome, of which I know there's no epitome of, you know, finality when it comes to the things of God. Yes. But yeah, I'm just looking forward to see, you know, what is in store in the next surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was going to compliment you on your beautiful voice. For me, that has always been, if I hear you speaking, oh, I know you. who is speaking. <laughs> but let me not assume everyone watching this yeah. knows you. So could you please introduce yourself? So my name is Coach Tracy. And um, now what else should I say? I'm a child of God. I love Jesus. Born again. You know, I work. My, my, my whole life has become, you know, all about the kingdom. You know, what does the Lord need to be done, you know? Yes. So that's what I'm currently doing, but I'm a content creator, I'm an author, media personality, and um, I'm a transformational speaker. So depending with the date, depends with what kind of Kush Tracy you get. Today, but yeah. <laughs> today, what are we getting? Today, I think today you're getting more of the transformational speaker because yes. yeah, we are going to have a conversation. So yeah. I feel... It's leaning towards, you know, being a speaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we that's are, what we are doing today. That's what we are doing. Yeah. You know, we are continuing with our beautiful series I've loved here on the show, Rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you building or are you rebuilding in mm -hmm. your life right now? I think it's more of rebuilding and building. It's the two things at the same time. Because uh -huh. there are new things you have to build and then you have to rebuild the old ways which you had, yes. the things you knew. So you have to rebuild again. Um, from scratch, meaning you have to get rid of what was to begin something else, mm -hmm. and it could be with because I'm still the same. I'm, I'm still the same person, but now a different mindset. A, a different mindset. Um, you know what I know is different from what I knew then. So there's a lot of rebuilding and also building new things. Yes. So yeah. You know, I would do a great disadvantage uh -huh. if I picked this conversation just from anywhere. Yeah. So I learned somewhere of your name, Kush. <laughs> Even me, I always thought, is this yeah. Kush the we ah, or is this Kush? But yes. this is this is a name you've had since for I was a baby. baby. You know, and yeah. it got me interested mm -hmm. in your childhood. Mm -hmm. How did you grow up? Mm -hmm. And as I was doing my research, I learned a lot of things about your childhood, mm -hmm. life growing up to this troubled stage that you were in, mm -hmm. dealing and using drugs at the same time mm -hmm. to now the person that we are seeing right now. So mm -hmm. how do we get here how how did we get here mm -hmm. you know this point where you are like i'm leaving it all behind i've done whatever i needed to do and now it's time for me to turn my life around mm -hmm. if you don't mind walking us through your life mm -hmm. from childhood to where we are right now mm -hmm. so that we can get a proper understanding of how we really got here mm -hmm. yeah so interesting so i'll go I'll, I'll speak of what is meant to be unleashed in the season of life yes because, you know, the Lord, as the Lord is teaching you things and, you know, um, showing you where he's calling you, yeah. that there's, there's also seasonal information that he allows you to give Good. because of that season. Yes. So the, the, the older I grow and mature in my faith, the more I understand those things. Mm -hmm. So um, the name Kush doesn't come from weed. I was called that by my parents when I was a baby. And um, most of my um, relatives, Shosho, Guka, when they were still there, they just knew me as Kush. The name came from a dangari I used to wear. Yeah. It was yellow. And my mom was like, anytime I left school and I came home, that's what I wanted to wear. So they had to make sure it's washed, clean, dried by the time I'm getting home. So when I came home and they, you know, after you take a shower, then they're like putting something on you. I used to cry so much. But that kangweli kwanga, they'll put everything else. Then when you valish a Jew, then it could become. Yes. So that was that. So the thing was written Kush Kush. So they used to call me Kush Kush. <laughs> but it's so funny because yeah. all my nicknames were K's. Kush Kush, Kolonde, Kindakindaki, Kuludosh. Eh, but my dad nicknamed me after all those K's. I don't mm. know why, mm -hmm. but it was just interesting. So that's how I came about you know, being called Kush. So it's a name I've grown up being called. So I didn't like, you know, get it from weed and all of that. Yeah. Just to make it clear. Yes. And um, Tracy came from my real name, Teresia. When I went to high school in class six, 
my mom decided to write on my books tracy i think she had it from my my Jew somewhere and she was like tracy sounds nice it could be a short form of teresia so i was called tracy yeah. but now being called teresia it's because both my grandparents were called teresia so i could not escape my mom's mom she was called teresia my dad's mom was called Teres- teresia mm. What a coincidence. And I being her first daughter and also the first daughter of my dad. Teresia. By default, Teresia. Uh-huh. So there was no other way around that. Yeah, okay. So that's that's the genesis of my name. So mm. I tried to use only Kush when I was starting out in the industry, but I just it didn't have a ring to it. It was just like Kush in a sound. So I was like, uh, Kush Tracy. I was like, oh, that's a good one. So yes. I just went with two of my names yeah. and just put them together. So that's where Kush Tracy came from. Mm. So growing up, I always wanted, my dad is an engineer, so I wanted to become an engineer as well. I've always been a daddy's girl. And um, I wanted to do electrical engineering because he was an electrician or do um, piloting. So I've always been smart. I'm, yes. a, I'm a smart person like outside of everything else. And yeah. I bless the Lord because right now I get to use my brains more, you know. <laughs> It's like the restoration process of the Lord. There we go. You know? So that was that. I really wanted to do engineering. So after high school, I think I lived a pretty very quiet life. But in high school, I was more of... um, I was more of like, say, I'm an activist, but yes. I was those people who fought the bullies. Like, I'd know someone is a bully and I'd bully the bully, but not really bullying them. But I'd actually be a voice for those people who felt um, less privileged Voiceless. and for the people who wanted to take advantage of them. Mm. I used to like really hate mm. it. And hate is a strong word, but I didn't like how they were doing things. So I'd, I'd usually like wait and see if someone is coming at someone because they are quiet or they're reserved, they can't speak then I'd be the voice for that person. Okay. So right now when I look back, I'm like, yeah, it's always been in you. It's just that you never paid attention and how yes. you did or went about it was a bit um, different and mm. a bit wrong. Mm. But, um, you know, your heart was at the right place, but then it was misdirected. It was misguided. You didn't really have the right and proper, you know, um, guidance. So in high school, that's the kind of a person that I was. And in high school, by the time I was leaving, well, I was the deputy head girl, a dorm captain, a prefect. But then again, I left with two suspensions and all the times I used to go home and come back. You know, the teachers are like, one, she's smart. She's very respectful to the teachers. She's a good student. But then again, it's her friends who she's hanging around that enable her to make these mistakes. Yes. And so she's always with the wrong people at the wrong time, hence the suspensions. Mm-hmm. But they could not point out anything like this girl is disobedient. That was never there. So I found it to be very interesting. And... um. So that happened. I think I've always been a rebel, but also, I don't know whether we can say that they are good rebels, <laughs> but you know, it, it came from a good place. But then again, it was because it was misguided. So it ended up being in the wrong hands, mm. you know? So there was that. So that was pretty much high school. After high school, I left. I got called to JQuat, main campus for um, uh, electrical engineering. But you know, life happens. I wasn't able to go there. Yeah. So I ended up going to KU to do theater and film. And after, I think the first year was, I got into KU when I was 18. So I think just when I had turned 19, I started, I met a few people and um, I met a friend. He was, he was interested in putting like a girl band. Cause that time it's when we had a lot of the, you know, we have women coming yes. together, doing music together. So that was a lot of that. So he was like, you know, I have this idea. I want to bring about women. That time I was training kids how to swim. So I'm actually a very good swimmer. Oh yeah. So I was training kids how to swim. I was being paid 250 shillings <laughs> per hour. And that's like almost 40, 60 kids. Yeah. So I was like, you know, I was trying to hustle. He didn't really know what it meant, but hey, you know, so he came, I was actually training kids. I was like, you know what? I've had you like singing along to this, you know, um, Kina Kina Isa, you know, that time. So I used to like, hey, come on, Inge. you know, you're just going with the vibes. So I was like, it's like, I've had you doing this. And I know you, because back in high school, you know, I used to do solo buses, public yes. speaking. And I used to do those because they'd take me straight to nationals. So where I knew when we were working as a team, sometimes to Neza Chujotki were provincial. But I was like, you know, solo versus public speaking. I, I knew that those were funkies until now shows. Yeah. That, so I used to take part in a lot of solo projects. And um, I also did, um, swimming took me to nationals all throughout my high school. That was that. I did play basketball. I was one of the, I'm actually very swift on my feet and I'm very good at three pointers. Okay. So I'm very sporty. Come on, Lebron. <laughs> You know, I'm very, I'm quite, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm quite an extrovert in, 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 in some ways. Yes. So that was that. Mm-hmm. So, um, I got, I started, oh, we joined, we, we had a girl group, but then, you know, women, women are complicated. So I, I'm not a born Nairobi. So I, I've actually, I've, I've not lived like in Nairobi. So I don't know, Bitumingi's a mita. And so I'm getting it, I'm with your group. So mm-hmm. I was, you know, we were in a group with um, three other ladies. They were exposed, you know, they were already trying to do music and all of that. For me, all of this was very new. 
But um, when we got into the group, we tried to record a few songs, but then the, the difference of personality and, you know, I think just women and drama. I was 19 at that time and most of them, no, I was 18 that time. Most of them, they were like in their mm. mid-20s, yeah. early 20s. I don't know what happened, but it just didn't happen. So that aside, I went to a house party. That, those I don't know whether they're as popular nowadays. So mm. I went to a house party and um, I met a friend of mine. We were together in uh, primary school. So she was dating someone and she told me, um, there's a friend of mine that doing music and they're looking for a FMC, a girl who can rap and all of that. And she was like, is it something you'd be interested in? So that's how I ended up joining a group called Military Swag yeah. and I became the FMC. So that time I was signed, we were signed to Sub-Sahara. We launched an album, I think, in, uh, I can't even remember the year. Oh, mm. Lord. Was it 2011? Mm -hmm. No, not 2011. 2011, I was living high school. 20, I think, 12 or 13, 2013. So that happened. We did music for a while. Then um, I did a song, just in the same studio. I did a solo song, and uh, I was like, oh, Kumbe, I can actually do a song from start to beginning. So I was like, oh, confidence. Okay. So I decided to start writing and try to do more music. And um, by the time I was getting to the 23rd song, that's when Dandia came about, and I did the remix, and that's how I got into the mainstream oh. industry. So, and the idea of Dandy actually came. We were out in a club drinking with a friend of mine. Then I was like, that song played. Then I was like, yeah, I didn't need that. You know, it used Most to be that kind of like, how are you saying like, you know, do you think women they are just, you know, you feel like, uh, I'm not really a feminist, but I'm like, I do believe women have value. And what yes. that, at least I knew that. And I felt so bad the way like, you know, you are being portrayed as, you know, objects that can just be. Than because they can exactly so for, for me it came from a place of excuse me even we as women we can use you guys so well clearly i was a stupid then but then my heart you see your heart is in the right place but then right. again you're not guided to bring it out the right way so my intention was oh. to make women feel like you know we can call the shots hold on yeah. your heart is in the right yeah. place but you're not being guided exactly. the right way yes ah. oh that's a good treat that's a, good one. that's a good one you know so that happened and um that, that that's the place where my heart was when i was doing the remix to nikasema wezini dandia to kamama three so i was like saying you know we as women we can use guys and do what but then again there's this thing about the power of the tongue right now as we are, i'm talking to you and i'm looking back i'm like a lot of the things i was saying in the songs like how i can chipo guys and all of that that started becoming a trend because what i was singing about it came from the right place but then again it's the guidance that i did not have so i started um um uh, leaving out what i sang to prove a point do you get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. To prove a point. Oh, wow. I never thought about it like that, but that's so interesting. It is. So I think it was like... deep. <laughs> trying. No, true story. Try, trying to prove a point, you mm. know. I've always been an overthinker. So sometimes I think how I analyze things mm. can be a bit mm. weird for some people. Yeah. They're like, why would you think like that? But I'm yes. thinking it's just me. What can I do? I can't help it. Yeah. So that happened. And um, that's why I got into the mainstream industry. So I did that for a few I think that was around 2015 when I did the song, 2016, 2017. By the end of 20, 20, 2018, I'd released a song. I got called to an interview with um, Mr. Mima. She was that time working at Ebru. Yes. So I went for the interview and she was like, I love your style. I like your vibe. Because, you know, I used to be like this bad girl. I used to have a particular look and... Um, I've just always been this person. When I speak, I'm very authentic. If I don't know, I do not know. If I know, I know. I know. If I'm confused, I'll be like, you know, me and your sister, we yes. are as confused as they come. Okay. So she did love my personality. All right. Before yeah. we move to switch, let okay. me take you back to okay. something you said. <laughs> okay. The power of the tongue. Yeah. What you sang, mm -hmm. you started behaving as so. Mm -hmm. So how are your relationships, you know, at this particular point, mm -hmm. how are your relationships like? Mm. I think mean, that's so interesting. In all honesty, I wasn't doing any relationships. It was more of like situationships. You get, and I'm very sure, like, you know, I've met so many people and they're like, you ask them, like, define to me, you know, your relationship. Yes. And it becomes a bit difficult because then you come to realize you're actually not in a relationship, but you're in a situation with someone. You enjoy maybe sleeping together. You enjoy spending time together. But then there are so many gaps when it comes to the, to the, uh, the foundation of that relationship. And I think that became one of the most confusing things for me. And I think that's what I'm even drawn to. When I'm speaking about relationships, my perception is very different. And how I consider, because I feel like a lot of people go into situationships or rather relationships and they, they are not fully authentic 
So you are with someone, but you don't really know this person because they always show up as a persona. And sometimes the persona is based on who I think you'd like me to be or who I think you'd accept. But I don't feel like a lot of people get into relationships in wholesomeness because there is that fear. If I show you the real me, then you like will you be able to handle it? Do no, you have you that can't. capacity? You can't. So I was doing a lot of situationships. So it was more of just, you know, ratcheting around. Like clearly I was, I was doing everything. I was talking in my music, immorality. <laughs> Um, you know, drugs, substance abuse, thinking like being sexual is what made me more attractive and all of that. So looking back right now, I'm like, you know, that is all emptiness. It's not even about self-esteem because clearly I was a very confident person and that's one of the things that got me to where I was in the industry. So it was never even about self-esteem, but it was trying to create this being that I believed, being this, um, this artist, this is what I need to do, you know? So... I don't think it was lack of self-esteem because I've always been confident. You, yeah. There's no way you'd stand on a stage, twerk on guys you don't know, yes. and do all the things I was doing on stage, performing, wearing booty shots and all of that if you don't have self So you do have self-esteem, but it's then again, the it's self-esteem in an empty way, for lack uh, of a better word. It's yeah. still in an empty way. Uh -huh. Yeah. And drugs, where do you come in? Connect so, <sighs> drugs, that is so interesting. When I was in high school, um, in high school, I, I never, like we used to go for funkies and of course there was ile kuhepa tukenda funkies, especially when we were doing like provincials, nationals. Yes. I was in Machako's girl. So we had to travel sometimes to schools in Meru, yeah. Embu for nationals, provincials. And uh, guys used to run away with Siku, Wanaenda, Kwezo Mabaza, Uko Kukunyo and all of that. Like I think it's, it was a student thing. I don't know whether it happens nowadays, yes. you know, in schools. But that was a lot of yo kutoroka, Usiku Mnenda Shereju, Same Patana na Mabishte Wako and all of that. So guys used to do that and some people tried to introduce me to alcohol, but I'd promised myself I'll never drink until I'm over 18 and I have an ID. And while I stuck to my word, when I got my ID, I was like, ooh, it's time to get ratchet. You know, I was like, no, it's time to do the things they said I won't do. But then um, I started out, I just started out with, um, that time I was in KU, I started doing um, weed. Then from weed, I was doing alcohol. Then from alcohol, I started doing cigarettes. And of which cigarettes came about when I was in a situation with someone and um, they used to smoke cigarettes. That's the time, you know, I won't mention the brand, but it just come in and it used to give a, a very good ha head rush. <laughs> good lie of the devil. But I'm just saying <laughs> at that time, now, now you're speaking as me yeah. then. You know, I thought it was a good head rush. You know, there you get a bit like headed and all yes. of that. So... Um, I started smoking and um, by the time I knew it, shisha now came into the market. So I stopped doing um, cigarettes. Then I started doing shisha because I did love the flavors, the highness. I was like, you know, cigarettes, sometimes you smell and all of that. So I was giving myself an excuse just to use another drug. Mm. So basically it's just doing mm, the same thing. Mm. But now you justify what you're doing because yes. you're like, you know, no, I don't smell my hands. Yes. My hair is not smelling and all of that. So that's why I got into smoking. Shisha got so addicted. I used to walk with vapes. Um, in my handbag, in the car, in my pocket. Like I used to have a vape, especially when the small vapes came about. Because bong ni kazi kwa kisha tuong. Yani, you know, before utafte maka, washe, uweke, blow it, okay. I was like, vapes became the most convenient way of staying, in, you know, addicted to shisha. Yeah. So I started working with vapes and um, shisha was a hard one. I actually never thought I'd get over that. Like, I actually knew alcohol I could try. Cigarettes, it's because I could go for many months without using yes. them. But then I was like, vapes, I'm not sure whether I'm willing to give this up because they became too convenient. The fact that I could just carry them, if I smoke them, I don't smell like I've smoked anything. I just smell maybe like vanilla, strawberry or just something. You passion. smell good. You smell good. So that, that was actually one I never thought I'd be able to give up. I won't even lie. Even when I was like talking to God and I'm like, God, how are we doing this? How do we get out of this? Yes. But I know this one is hard. This one yeah. I don't think I didn't think I'll be able to get over smoking shisha because yeah. I loved the high. I used to smoke it at any given time before I sleep, when I wake up, just when I'm bored. I just really, I, I really love smoking vapes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So at what point do you become a dealer? Oh, dealing was I was in campus when I got into <laughs> oh. <laughs> when I got into campus. Of course, you need money to do music and all of that and move around. That time I'm in KU, the studio I'm recording at it's in Rongai. Yeah. So that skupanda matri kutoko koko nevi kila siku you're in Rongai and you still live on that side. It became it was a hassle. So of course you need money. You also need to dress nice, look nice, kwenda kwezo clubs to spend and all of that. So so you are in this cycle. You really want to do this. The idea was I wanted to become a, a voice for women, but then again, misguided. Because the idea of me even doing like who is in here, I was trying to like show, you know, as women, we can have, you know, power. We can be in control. We don't have to be used because there's just something that rubs yes. me off when it comes to how men sometimes mm -hmm. um, 
they they they, they just think using women is okay mm-hmm. and you know that just that narrative of you know they're clapping for such nonsense and it's like you've conquered you sleep with a woman it's like you've conquered you go t- telling everyone you know I slept with her it's like it's like she's a it's like a thing so i've always had a problem with that so um uh, selling weed okay that was even before dandia hey. i was still in campus so um uh, where, where i was in kahawa and i used to get like high grade shash and um so i just got into that iliwan kama mchezo you see there you can just have a conversation with someone they're like you know you have this personality you have a lot of friends and you know this can work and also that time you know you're kayang so guys are also trying to hit on you so you have a lot of guys coming to buy weed from you because they just want to have a conversation yeah. with you and anytime they were buying a lot of times they used to buy me a blunt so meaning i was high a lot of times you know because everyone is coming they're like buying and they're like ikonza ni hapo kwanza tuchome pamoja so you can imagine the number of blunts you're smoking in a day so there was that but then a friend of mine um you know he told me there's a a friend of his was telling him uh, the friend was a cop and he was like um there's this girl she's called cushions she's selling we know where she stays and like they had known there was something kuna mali watu walibrutana akamwambia just warn her cuz she's young she's like cuz my friend was like ah you know she's like 19 and he was No, let me nikisema hiyo watu watajua ni nani but just to <laughs> but yeah. it's someone i hold dear yeah. so he told me um this can get you arrested so stop whatever it is that you're doing and um you know and and i really appreciated that and i don't know something me just told me to stop so that same day i just called it quits i returned the weed to the guy who was supplying it to me and i was like you know what i don't want to do this anymore mm. so That was a rap. I just I just you know I'm one radical person. If I say I'm done, You're it's done. like we don't have a conversation. I'm like the moment I get to that place and I'm like, but then this makes sense and I'm done. I just wrap it up and I move on. Ooh. And I thank God for that because yes. otherwise I don't think I would have transformed. Okay. If I didn't have that radicality yes. of yeah. just saying we're done, moving on. Moving on. Yeah. But you know you're doing this, you know, you, you you you're trying to establish an image a persona that's not you. Yeah. The drugs, all these things. The cynics would say there's nothing wrong with alcohol, weed and all mm. these things. So what's the issue here? I think the most interesting thing is um I feel like it's all it's a personal thing for everyone. And um I feel like the more you understand who God is calling you to be, the sacrifices you'll have to make even getting to that place of deciding to go so I had to win my, my yeah. myself out of the drinking the smoking because i knew initially i'd try to like sema eh, leo nimewacha nimewacha a week two weeks i'm back doing the same thing so i was like okay you already understand how easy how it is easy for you um how easy it is for you to slip back into these ways so you need to come up with a different plan yeah. of how you get out because i say a lot of times if you don't understand the why you're doing what you're doing and when it began and who introduced you to it and uh, what ideas why do you believe the way you believe then a lot of times you'll just keep on doing something and you're doing it unconsciously right so getting to a place where i told myself um i i, I think uh, the reality check was with what i do right now after i left tv when god transitioned me into this space of getting into schools and speaking to students going into institutions and i do work for an organization called heroes of the nation so yeah. we have now the kingdom nation is the part of which um under where we do schools and institutions and uh, youth rallies and such things that deal with the youth and uh, you know such things mm-hmm. when i i started doing that i was very confused for like a few months after you know i left tv and i was like now what do i do and um i didn't i just knew that god is leading me somewhere so i went in a season of isolation it was very lonely and this is like last year so yeah. i left to be like the other year yes so i went in a season of isolation and then i just soaked myself in the things of god i was like jesus i need to mm. know you so i did the seeking and i think it's the work which um i did in that season of isolation that has brought about the person that i am right now okay so When when you go to schools and you meet a lot of students you meet a form one sometimes they are they're, they're like 13 some of them they're like 14 you meet mm. 12 year olds and they are in addiction they're like I'm addicted to cigarettes at that age I personally started smoking at the age of 19 nikiwa na ID right now form ones they're addicted to drugs form twos form threes form fours students are addicted to drugs they're addic- not even live alone drugs they're addicted to sex personally I started exp- exploring you know when I was like 19 so when when you meet the reality you know a lot of times we live ignoring the things which don't affect us yes. and you're like as long as it's not my sister my brother you know it's not anywhere close ho- close to home i'm good yeah i'm good it does not matter so 
when you have these experiences all the time, you're meeting people in addiction that's so young and you're like, if this is when you're starting, I don't even know where you'll be the next, maybe by the time you're 20. Because mm. six years is a lot of time if you're doing yes. this right now and you're struggling with it, you know. Just having those interactions and they, they, they taught me something. And um, it's either I can choose to ignore what's happening around yes. me and I can choose to pursue what I want, you know, my own ambitions mm. and just use the influence that I have to make money. That is easy to do. It was so easy for me to remain the way I was. Changing was the hardest thing. Good. That's why it's easy for people to hold on to who you are than accept who you've become. Yes. Because people are stuck in their seasons and who they are, that they don't know how to get out. And the fact that you're able to get out, it hurts them and it makes them feel, why did you get out? Why, why you... were you able? Good. But people don't understand. It's easy for me to remain the way I was. It was easier than for me to change. It's change not is easy. hard. Change is so hard. Change, change is hard. hard. Like literally when you have to count the cost of changing, it is hard. It is hard. Sometimes it's very confusing. Sometimes it's um, you lose out business opportunities and deals. That happened. You lose friends. But then again, um, just having the understanding of what you're called to do is bigger than where you are right now. And I think just holding on to the word of God, believing that there has to be a bigger purpose. Yes. It's just that I'm not able to see it mm. right now, but I need to trust what God is doing. And, um, you know, I, I think earlier on today I was listening to, I think, a sermon and yeah, someone or something. Mm -hmm. I was watching something and um, the story of Joseph. And the guy was saying, if Joseph knew he'd have to like do 12 years in a prison for him to get to the palace, honestly, would have said, God, nah. I am not mourning. No. No. And then I looked at my life and I was like, this is so, this is so true. If, if, if the Lord needs to show me what I have to endure to get to where he needs me to get, I'll most probably give up. But if that. I choose to take it a day at a time and learn each and every day ask myself, mm. what was the Lord teaching me today? And how have I grown today spiritually, um, emotionally, and, um, you know, mentally? And I'm not, it's not even about the physical growth and all of that, but more of like, what, what, what did I get today? What am I pulling out of this? Even in my low moments, like what, what yes. is the Lord trying to teach? So we just get into a space of seeing when you're able to see people on the ground and uh, see how life is for some people, mm -hmm. it's either you choose to ignore you do your own life or you have to sit back and ask yourself what i can what can i do to make what it can better I do? then with the yes. influence comes responsibility Good. number one you're either responsible for destroying other people's children or you choose to be responsible to bring them out of the darkness oh, wow. so oh, it's, wow. it's it's a matter of choice it's a ma i want to get real yes i want to get to yeah. the choice the light bulb moment yeah. where you knew ah man i know change is expensive but mm. i gotta do it mm -hmm. but i we left you went and got Tamima mm -hmm. and a job mm -hmm. at Switch. Oh, yeah. You got this yeah. job, right? So if you could walk me through that part, mm -hmm. finding something you love and then losing it, right? Mm -hmm. And also suffering from how you look. I was doing the mad squish. Mm -hmm. And oh, now, the bleaching! Oh, the bleaching is like just before before I got into okay. Before you okay. got oh, Man, so do you wanna, my story no, <laughs> it's all right. Do, do you want to tackle that? Cause it's okay. I was we can doing talk my about it, yeah. You are using more than forty k in yeah, a month. Yeah, there's a season for like uh, I think almost six months. I was doing the glutathione, and they are quite expensive, yes. especially the injections, even the powders and the the products, the the oil, the lotions and oils, and all of that. Then after that, I was doing others in Zimbabwe, like around maybe twenty to buy like the whole thing, twenty to twenty five, sometimes yeah. thirty thousand depending if you need for knuckles and all of that for how many years i bleach i think almost three years three years three or four yeah, yeah. clearly the lord died and resurrected <laughs> on the that day surely that is what happened <laughs> Sometimes I like to look at my life and I'm like, you know, it's three years of plenty. It's like I was on TV for three years. Yes. Meaning, you know, after three years, it was time to resurrect, get into other things. Yes. So sometimes I look at my life like that. Yeah. I, tr I try to, um, I try to really see myself through the, the word of God. Because I came to realize all of us were going through the same things. Challenges, maybe different levels, you know. Nothing new under struggles. the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. Clearly, it's even in Ecclesiastes. Like literally, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing which is happening right now that is not out inside the Bible. Like mm, it's somewhere mm, in the Bible. Mm. It's for you to just do the seeking for you to find it. Yes. So I started looking at my life in that way. Like yeah. I even feel like I had a Jonah moment. That mm. time I, I, I got saved in 2019, January, back still by October. Then by the next year, I'd gotten back to God. And I felt like that was my Jonah moment. So either way, if you're able to find yourself in the stories of the Bible, you are able, because I feel like the Bible was intentionally put together 
every all of us we are in some story we are part of a story mm. so it's just for you to find yourself and find what delivered those people out of that mm. or what was that season yes. for or what was the lesson or what is god saying to you good so yeah so why are we bleaching to mm-hmm. start with yeah. which part of us is feeling a bit like i'm mm-hmm. not pretty enough mm-hmm. i need to look a certain way i need to you know like which part of your life were you struggling with i think it was what was it because i don't think it was self-esteem because clearly if i could twerk in a booty shot and grind on the people i do not know on stage and do some silly things how many people did i on stage when i was lit because i had to perform when i was under the influence like yes. there was no way i was going to ratchet on stage if i was on a sober mind because clearly the holy spirit was always loud so i knew what i was doing was wrong but i just chose to shut that voice and not listen to it i was like yeah. i'm gonna do me that was what i was doing i'm still looking for way in the bible we are told to follow our hearts and do our own things you know i'm still looking for that place yes. cuz i'm like yes. <laughs> if we get that we are able to like yeah watch her to relax but yeah. clearly we are told we need to lay down our lives and carry our crosses and follow the lord mm. so um i don't think it was an esteem issue but i believe it was an identity issue when you don't know who you are but then again the world is always telling us who we are And at that time we had gotten in my career it was more of um there has to be a few things you have to do for people to talk because of course there was that conversation when I'm dark all of a sudden you become light you're like so you're bleaching you know people are still talking about you so you, you remain relevant that's the idea mm. then there was um the idea of you know if they may become light skin I'll be more appealing to other people it's not even about the the people who are so far they are you know they're like all about Kush Tracy yes. but it's more of like which other people do i want to appeal to what levels do i want to get to so it wasn't i don't think my story was was a self esteem issue because yeah. the things i was doing clearly i did not care about what anyone thought but then again it was more of like which other level can i get to if i do this which other people do i draw in what um Um, I, I thought it's something to do with empowerment at that time. You know, as a woman, I can decide to change my skin tone and that means I'm empowered, you know. So it was just um, a lot of folly that came with the ideologies which I thought and also based on what I believed then. And also, in all honesty, I did not have anyone who was a role model. Monyali kwanga na ongea vitu zinamik sense. Okay, right now, looking back. Like, it was all about, you know, a big bam bam, a big hua hua, a big, uh, you know, big here, big here, skinny there. you know tight here uh, tight here you know do this like there was a lot of those are the people I was looking up to and right now I look back and I'm like surely hey foolish if foolishness was a person that would be me because you look at the things that made you call people there are people I used to call my um <laughs> my my role models no Lord, okay, Lord, thank you for your grace and mercy yes <laughs> the people I used to call my role models right now I look back and I'm like what was the role modeling there about <laughs> and I'm like whoa you whoa you whoa you <laughs> You know, I think I came to realize uh, it's one thing to admire the talent and the gifts that people have, huh? but and uh, the Lord is the giver of all gifts. Yes, the devil cannot give anything good. So the only thing the devil does is pervert what the Lord has already given you. So the devil can't give. I love that. You know, so coming to understand every gift that we see, we adore and we love about people, whether it's um, their artistry, um, what they stand for, their creativity, and all of that, it's a gift from God. Yes. But then again, when it's misguided, it means it can serve the kingdom. We only have two kingdoms: the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Mm. the enemy the devil small g capital g that's why i tell people you know be very careful when people are like you know i thank god ask yourself which, which god, god exactly because god abba father almighty jehovah jireh elohim adonai el shaddai that god is not a god of immorality so number one if you're thanking god for immorality that is not that's not your ask yourself g. who god Exactly. We are serving and worshiping too many gods. But then we have this as long as someone says, you know, I thank God, you're like, yo, bra. Yes. Which god are we talking about? Because there is the god of this earth. So there is a lot of that. God is not a god of drugs and alcohol. God is not a god of anger, envy, and is not a god of competition. He's not a god of wow. of um complications complications god is a god of peace god is a god of you know love god is a god of bringing people together and pro, um what is about is about good yes. you get so anytime people are saying ask yourself are you really representing the true god yeah. or do you represent another god mm. then there's a lot of confusion um and that's why i talk about jesus a lot because i want people to know i'm talking about jesus the way the truth and the light you get and we don't get to the father but I, I, we have to go through him there's no way we can say we want to go to god yet we do not acknowledge jesus and that is where the problem comes in 
we don't want to acknowledge Jesus why because Jesus you know, he came he spoke he said but then we are not willing to 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 let go of self so that yes. we can allow Jesus mm-hmm. to be the leader mm-hmm. and to take control and to take over so a lot of times it's easy to say I thank God but then again I realized money is God careers are God yes. our own selves our ego is God So which God exactly mm. are we talking about? So I'm always very cautious about people who say you know I want to thank God I'm like number one God is not a god of immorality God is not a god of drugs substance abuse God is not a god of violence God is not a god of um all the things which in all honesty yeah. are, are not good things he's not that god God is not a god of materialism and doing anything to make the bank and mm. make money mm. that is not our father yes. So we have too many gods people just need to be sure and understand which, which god, god exactly god? are they following yes. serving worshiping and you know the mm. one they're being introduced mm-hmm. to so there is a lot of that I can even put as a chain of thoughts. No, What are we talking about? The bleaching, <laughs> oh, bleaching. part. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry for I, no. I, I No, 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 no. Sorry no. for digressing. No, I don't know where no, why no. we went that direction, yes. but anyway, back to that. Mm. Oh, so I don't think it was I think it was more of like, you know, you get to that place in your career and I say this, especially when it comes to music. That's why when I go to speak to students, I really speak a lot about social media influence and um music. We listen to a lot of music and we don't understand the power that comes with the music that most fear the music creates and um sometimes we wonder why there are some people who are like um just stuck up in who they are where yeah. they at and there's nothing which is changing and um you know we 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 promote a lot of music that is singing about you know gangstership and you know I bless the lord for allowing me to go through that season because now when I speak I don't speak from a place of ignorance or from someone's story You've I speak from a place it. of I've been there and um you know that calling the way, the way we call out you know sisi ni wasewa ghetto and this is for my people you know from islando me i'm not a bontao so mimi ule mshamba mimi niko gang gang mimi niko hiyo team yale wasi washake wenye wana jonga kana hilo tu hapa kule mimi niko kwa hiyo group so like I, i i see a lot of youths and i meet a lot of them and a lot of them even write to me and they speak about um uh you know the way they're in poverty and how they they've embraced the gangstership the that way of life the kazi yetu ni kuamka tunapiga mavela mtu wangu like wame embrace wakichukua ni kama ni identity yao um last week i was doing missions um with our team and we yeah. were in um is it i don't even know whether it was was it like mm. like keep your karibu so we are having we are, we are having missions and i'm talking to some students huh? and it's a very remote place so there are high schoolers or mekuja home si say kuna KCC so in your home so we are having a conversation and one thing i came to realize a lot of them because they come from a place where there's um they are really struggling they come from very um uh, difficult backgrounds and their parents are not wealthy enough to provide even maybe mm. three meals a day maybe it's mm. one once a day when akula in every two days they eat like once and um you know a lot of them they don't know who they are and in that area a lot of them get married earlier on in life they they like literally by the time unapata mtoto wako like we met like i think it was a 10 year old na kona mtui na kona boy what and you sit and you ask yourself you you are here in Kanairo you feel like you've made it in life and you feel like life revolves around you but there's so many people who don't have wow. the right information there's so many people who are going young kids who are going through a lot of things so sometimes even the missions mm. which we do humble me and teach me mm. so many things and i feel like life is very life can be very short mm. i might be here today but be die really impact anyone yeah because you know there's one it's one thing to be famous it's one thing to be great and be of value that even when you're dead people still speak of you know this is something she taught me this is something she did this is something she said to me that i'm still you know yes. it's still helping me so there is that but that means there has to be a lot of self awareness mm. and you know just understanding why you're here and uh, you know the period which we have left is yeah. dogo sana you yeah. know in a hundred years most probably most of us are tutakuwa tuko so what exactly so what did we, we do you know legacy? so there is oh the the back to bleaching so mm-hmm. that happened um uh, when i was doing that i don't think it was a self esteem i think it was just more of an identity you get to a place in the career where you have to add other things and this is a place where a lot of um artists even when you look at internationally globally there's a place where as an artist you get to then you need to look for something else to get you to the next level so it means it's either contract it's either blood uh, it's either you know blood yapa kwa dunia yenye tunapatiana we have a ritual which we have to do for us to get to a place that's why we're seeing coffins on stage that's why we are seeing things you know it looks like art but the reality is there are a lot of demonic things which are happening mm. life is very spiritual mm. apparently but a lot of people don't want to believe that yes. they're like what i don't believe in it does not affect me there's a lot of witchcraft which is happening that's when as a patamtu are obsessed na celebrity and if you're honest you're like 
this is like a weird obsession. It's because they, they are spells which are casted. And if you're not aware, that means it's easy for you. So you think you are in control of how you see someone. But then again, it's the spell that is working in yes. you. That obsession to a point where I can fight with someone when you're talking. It's an obsession and you need to ask yourself. In all honesty, who and am I can worshiping? go back and forth on social media exactly. over someone we don't know. Exactly. It's an obsession. And then there's a place you get to as an artist. Uh, it's either you 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 add some things, kuna witchcraft. I know that people don't believe in that, but witchcraft is there. But anyway, like I said, there are things for this season, there are things for the next season. Um, there is a lot of witchcraft. There is a lot of rituals which are being done. You don't just get to the top, e or to evil. You don't. It's either God lifts you or the devil. That's why even Jesus aliambiwa nini, bow to me and I'll give you everything. So if you want everything, the fame, the money, the material things, the enemy is willing to give you as long as you win souls for his kingdom. Mm. You take people where? That side. Yeah. So there is that. So I feel like it's important for people to be more aware of the things they consume in the name of entertainment. And I feel like that is where God is also using me when we're going to schools. Because you find someone who wants to do a whole different thing with their life. But then again, the things which are influencing them. And like I said, sometimes we, we are so, um, we get so emerged in what we listen to and mm. what we are watching that we start behaving that way. Mm. So you find students mm. in school who are making a gang, who are making a gang, who are making a vela, kwa nini? Kwa sababu content wana consume, na wambia tu venye kubuta vela, kuchana ndio form. Kwanza I saw this trend of kuchana, mtu amejaza taxi nuku imefura. You go to high schools, mapala na form one, manze, ukimonga levi uko, bro, shida ni nini? Sasa, so, jame uko langa. And then, you see the way I've spoken right now. Have you, have you met have you met young people and that's how they're speaking? <laughs> it looks funny, but then again, it's like a spirit and you have to Because it's not normal for some. You, 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 but from nowhere, the things you're listening to, even how you're speaking, yes. you And I tell young people, sometimes, is on the vitus neza. Una juna zi smati mimi ni hasla, mimi ni ni. But una zapatana na mtu wa mana mwenye neza kukusegi, akimesha takazi. But the problem is, the way you're speaking, ako, eh, hey, mimi siyazi chaka kwa employee msi, ana kuja kuongevo, una get. So you might lose out on opportunities because of small, stupid things which you're doing, thinking, in it, your, in your it's trend, a vibe. Yasai, it's a vibe. It's just because not. you can, and I say, just because you come from the ghetto, it's land of mtu wangu. Hey, manishi, yondo itakuwa life yako. Uneza toka iyo side, uka yes. miss side ingine. Yes. Una get. Yeah. Sometimes we, 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 we take where we at to be who we are. Mm, and it shouldn't be like that and i want yes. people to understand this every single artist who's doing whatever they're doing the fans keep them relevant the fans that's why artists will do whatever it takes to get you talking about them some people have no business even being on social media because hakuna kitu ya maana wanafanya ukiangalia content wana consume zero hata isaidi ku improve career yao ku improve life yao zero but always only. Ne yongo ma ni kali ni kali ni kali. Well, say it's only fi yako manzi na kasi juu ya adze. And that's why I became very cautious about even the things I listen to. I'm very intentional. Me right now, you can ask me which song is trending. I don't know. Honestly, I don't care. And I don't. I'm not even concerned. And it's not out of arrogance, but it's because not arrogance, ignorance. But it's because I've come to a place to understand whatever I allow, whatever I'm consuming, whatever I allow into my space, my atmosphere, whatever I'm paying attention to, highly influences me. Highly, subconsciously or consciously. Sometimes you might do something not even realizing it's because you saw it somewhere. Yes. So a lot of people, like, and I think even that is what happened when I even started bleaching my skin. Because I was watching a lot of online. So, you know, that time you're keeping up with whatever is trending, wasani, wagani. If you look at all the artists, unapata itedha, ali bleach, ama alienda kuongeza huku, waka ongeza huku. Like, there has to be something. Ama there's a scandalous, you mm. know, a relationship, ama ingia. Mm. There's a what. So you start doing those things because these are the things which are working. But then again, understanding that you don't have to be the same as everyone else is a whole different thing. Getting to a place of understanding, I don't need to fit in, but I'm called by God to stand out. So just because everyone is thinking this type of way, I don't need to think like that. That's why we are told, God, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be renewed by the, trans, the be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm. And for me, I tell people, there's no way you can have a transformed mind or a no transformed life or a renewed mind unless you're consuming the right things so i got to a place i was like in all honesty yes i'm an artist but in all honesty kush tracy your music has been because the only thing i was doing the hardest thing is for you to sit yourself down and call yourself out and tell that is hard that's why i say that's hard. it's easy for me to remain the same it was easy changing was hard changing factory settings <laughs> 
Because it's not easy to sit yourself down. And I even, I even apologize to even the ladies who are in my music videos. It's just that I don't have access to those channels. I would have deleted all of those songs. Because right now when I look back, Aww. it was all fun and games. But this, this is someone's daughter. This is going to be someone's future mom. And for me, the idea back, I, I, so, it is such a shame. When I look back, I'm like, how shameless was I? But you know, the enemy is a liar. We bless the Lord. Yes. But this, that's a, I, I was like, you know, I was calling, when I'm calling like Big Sense to come, I was like, you know, you have to wear something short. It has to be booty. It has to be sexy. You have to be twerking. And I'm like, can you have some sexiness? Can you? I want you to look at the mindset which I had. This is someone's daughter. But then again, because it's not my daughter. It's not my niece. It's not, I do not know you. You are trying to make ends meet. Then I'm going to exploit you. If I need to pay you to do that, well and good. I will. If you want but then exposure, again, when I, well and good. Where, where, if you want exposure, well and good. Here's an opportunity. But then again, I started pointing the finger to myself. And I was like, Kush, well, clearly you're not married yet. Yeah. You don't have kids yet. Someday you'll have daughters. And would you want your daughters to be used like this by someone who thinks like this? I started asking myself the right questions. And I was like, you can justify it the way you want. Question is, how many people do you think have gotten into drugs because you show that lifestyle is okay and they follow you and they do what you're doing? How many people? And I've met so many people who've told me, by the way, Atta, even, even the skin bleaching story, I wasn't even going to speak about it. But then the amount of DMs I get from women women wives mothers the amount of dms i get and they're like what did you do so i answered them in my dms but then i was like you know what let me just put this out and just you know um just say this and i'll build on it and get into deeper details but it, it came from your place yeah um so many people asking me these questions and they're like you know you meet like there's a lady um she's married and she was like you know i've been married for i think almost six six years i think she said six years i'm not sure and, um, you know, she got married as a light skin. But the reality is she's a dark skin. So she's gotten to a place and she feels like, yo, mikorogu imenza kufanya ile kitu sasa. Unajua kidogo inafikanga amali, epito, skin yako ikineza fika amali enye. It can't take anymore. Mm. And uh, she's like, I really want to stop, but I don't know whether my husband is going to stay. Oh. So in a situation like that, what can you do? Because oh. the only thing I can tell her is, I'd rather you go back to being authentic. Tell him. If he's mature enough, He'll understand. He'll understand. He'll forgive you for that. Because if your husband doesn't know you are initially a dark-skinned girl, that means you've built your relationship on a foundation of lies. Of lies. And anything we built on a foundation of lies, then that Crumbles. means it's, it's going to crumble at some point. And I think even I got to a place and I was like, if I want to become a mom, assuming I'm getting married to a dark-skinned guy, my kids are going to be dark. So just because I'm light, am I going to bleach my kids? Because we have parents who are bleaching their kids at a young age. Unazam toto unanza kumbleach because utaki mtoto wako kwa dark skin. True stories. They're being covered all, all over the world. So Documentaries. So you bleach from here or yeah, the whole body? Yeah, unanza bleach, unanza kwe koto tu nini, unanza kwe koto tu nini kwa, kwa whatever, kwa whatever, kwa ini ito aje, kwa nini za watu hii. So there is that. Nika kwa, you know, sometimes we start doing things, we think is a vitu ni kidogo, but if we don't deal with them, then there's a potential for them to escalate and become something else. Mm. And I was like, the way your mind is, you're not too far from making a decision of, you know, you'll decide to bleach your kids just because you think being light is better. Then if I'm doing that as a mom, then what am I trying to tell my kids? Then it will be, it's not being dark. Mm. You need to be light so that mm. you can fit in. Mm. So when I started asking myself the right questions, that's when, um, you know, I started become, becoming more in, intentional with what I'm doing. Then, um, you know, th th there's always, we, we, we all know the potential we have and who we can become. I think it's something the Lord has put in all of us. And that's why the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us. And he's always telling us, don't do that. There's a right way of doing, of things. doing things. But then again, we want to be our own to gods mm. and do whatever we want to we do. We want to do. So there is that. Yeah. But how do you reverse though, the bleaching? Because mm -hmm. I'm assuming you spent a lot of money. Man, I, I, I was yeah. doing my maths and it went to millions. Yeah, Push. it was a lot of money. In all, on, atta, I, think, atta prepared that I think it's a thing I was like, you know what? I won't even go to the material side of it. Because sometimes, I, <laughs> what do they call it? Some cost fallacy. Yes. It's like I'm destroying my skin and I'm spending a lot of money. Then I decide to continue destroying it because I've already spent a lot of money. But I was like, you know what? Anything that God, anything that I have lost, it means it wasn't supposed to be in my future. Mm. So God is going to give me new. And I think just getting to a place of understanding, it's okay to start again and to start from scratch and to start from zero. 
and just having a mindset of saying um yeah i've come this far but this has been destroying me it's okay let me go back to square to one square. so do let you, me begin again yeah. do you get the products to reverse like for anyone who is at now like the woman in your dear yeah. if she was to say enough is enough mm -hmm. how can she reverse that are there products now you can apply mm -hmm. to your skin now to go back to your original mm -hmm. skin I think for me, I'm always... Or how did you go about it? I, I, I believe... <laughs> we believe God is a miraculous God. Amen. I wouldn't like... Amen, you know? amen, amen. Yes. <laughs> we believe in the word of God. I believe yeah. in the power of restoration and redemption. I believe that God can change a life in an instant. You know? And I think that is what makes my story very different. Because yeah. a lot of times it's always like, Ulienda Wapi, you are in what church? Uh, who helped you? And all of that. For me, it's only the Bible that transformed me. In all honesty, I started reading Matthew by the time I was getting to Revelation transformation had happened the way i was living my life things started shedding off even the drinking and you know because god is like i'm calling you into a space where you need to yeah. deliver people out of addiction you need to speak to people on how they can overcome and see how possible it is then again you're still here how do you deliver people out of mm. something you're still struggling with or still doing it won't make any sense so i feel there has to be that aspect of um sacrifice and understanding what the, the 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 end goal is not even about my temporary um pleasure mm. like the drink if i decide i can still keep on drinking you know you here can. and there i can but then again i'm like what is the call and tail am i willing to sacrifice this because sometimes there are levels you can't get with god if you're not willing mm. to let go of some things you know and don't, you're not willing to be a willing vessel to do the work so I had so many people, um, I had so many people, um, you know, they've asked that question, you know, what are you using to stop bleaching and all of that? And it's like, they expect me to give them an answer of, there's this product to go and buy, you use this. And I know that people will tell you, oh, to know, Zayma, foot, to me, na kumdisha kwele skin, to nyako nini nini. I did not think about all of that. I was like, you know what, I've already spent enough money trying to do all of this. I'm not even going to overthink. I just walked into a supermarket, nilikuwa anything that has pure cocoa butter, pure shea butter, pure coconut oil that is my cup of tea that's what i did i just threw everything away and i said i think sometimes my radicality sometimes it does help yes me. yes you know that's your yeah, yeah. Nifunga, mikorogo, nika tupa, nika sema, yote is a wrap nikaenda, nika nunua, coco. at least i knew that i knew cocoa butter shea butter and coconut oil they are natural oils and yeah. they're they good for the you, skin you mix them together yeah, mini, mix tu, okay. na nika tu, yondo, mm. Mwili, nini? and in like mm. i think a month two months kini yangu liko ngemerudi melani nimerudi but of course kulikuwa na I had like, um, there's a time I used to cut and sorry for another day, not today. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. But um, there, there, there are parts of my body that took more time, especially um, and because there was a lot of things I was using. But the good thing is, I think it's a beautiful thing how God works. Some people didn't even realize nili kwa ni metoka from unbleaching ni karudi kwa. It's like the Lord ali 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 kuna wase ali blind wase <laughs> design yenye mm -hmm. you'd still ama people knew but they were afraid of asking me because mm -hmm. they were like how is she going to take it but then for me that became very empower, empowering because i was like i'm authentically me i don't need to force you know um to force a complexion for people to like me you like me you don't well and good it's none of my business you know opinions yako yes. ka nayo iku nice yeah. and just getting to that place of understanding i'm a child of god the way i look i'm created in his image so i don't need to change a thing about me because none of us knows what god looks like but we are, we are told we are created in his image yes. so the only thing we know is all of us we look like kim and i think that's the biggest mystery mm. we can never figure it out we can never exactly okay. so mm -hmm. just having that perception mm. of you know what i'm not going to waste money i don't know buying what I bought na hizo ni vitu rahisi kupata kwa maduka. Just go and buy stop bleaching and start applying it on your body. Yeah. And as you're doing, you know, just ask the Lord to restore you. I mean that's what he did. Right now I look at my body sina stretch marks sina. Yaani sina issue man. My no? skin is like hile venye lirudi although although kuna here and there. Yeah. But I think it's like the Lord is like you see when you go outside of my will, sometimes you have thorns and you have scars that you still have to deal with. But it's like the grace is sufficient. So are you still are you willing to speak about this? when I've not fully um, gotten you back and healed you. Yeah. So there is also that. Because sometimes we wait for the healing to sometimes. speak about it, but he wants exactly. to see. Can you still speak about it? Can you still, I, I say, even miracles. Sometimes we might be praying for miracles and when it doesn't happen, oh, we are praying for her. And I think this is something I learned last year. I went to a meeting. There was a meeting that was happening. And um, in that meeting, I told God, 
today must get a profess you know i've always been like hey, leo una jada where people get prophesied for uh, from yes. pulpits yes. and i was like today is that day yeah, even when prophecy was happening i stood up and i was sharing this with some friends of mine i stood up and i was like today i'll be prophesied upon hey haikufanyika nikakaa chini meeting kesha nikaishia okay acha tukaseme ni what but oh you have me i say yeah. about it so it was during rema rema last year yeah and i was so sure i was so sure and yeah, that day i said today apostle joshua selman must prophesy the way he points people from nowhere because I, i he's really helped me in my work yes. but then there are things he taught and i wasn't willing to understand those things but now when i look back i understand the things he was saying because mm. he said this and it's just about what you're talking about if you don't get a prophetic word directly from a man of god does that mean god is not good and god hasn't prophesied over your life already in jeremiah he tells us before we were born he knew he knew So how many people do you think are waiting for that it day when someone says this about them mm-hmm. for them to believe God mm-hmm. but what happens when the lord is like i've not sent anyone to come and prophesy but i spoke you. to you already but are I, you I listening spoke to you, i'm speaking to you and you have access to know what i'm saying about you the bible are you listening so that and i think it's that's why i say my my walk with god has been very interesting there are so many expectations we put unless someone speaks over me i can't It's not unless it. someone prays over me i can't and that's the idea i had i knew the day i'll stop drinking and drugs and all of that that's it will be the day ni mekelewa mikono nikaanguka na nikaroll and for some people that is what happens but then again the lord was like people have placed hands on you you've not fallen bado and that happens to some people mtu anaenda nini ako hey ni mekelewa ni mekelewa ni mekelewa lakini bado ijaifanyika yeah. so that means sometimes there are people who that will work and sometimes it's the manifestation of the holy spirit and sometimes it's the deliverance that is happening yes. but that is not going to be everyone's story so that means we are limiting god to what we think its signs and wonders but sometimes god will work in your life in a way that won't look like signs and wonders but the sign is in your faith you so go. even for me like reading the word speak gosh transformation in itoka yes. so me i'm a big Mimi ule mse mwenye nakwambia anga cheki kaki watch kwa bible so my word like mimi mse naamini word inaweza kukuchange bila hata mtu kukekelea mikono na kuombea the word can change but then again you have to read in humility mm. don't read to try to prove mm. yourself god read him in humility and always ask the holy spirit to speak and open your eyes as you're reading yes. to see yourself in the word of god because you'll be surprised hakuna kitu mchoote amefanya kwa dunia yenye iko kwa hiyo bible i love that you know yeah. and i love the way you said you had believed that once you quit this and this and this yeah. kila kitu itakuwa poor hey. but then you go on tv <laughs> You know we see you on yeah, TV yeah. one of the hosts yeah. of this really lovely show I yes. loved 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 that show you mm-hmm. know and then we wake up one day the station is no longer there yeah. they've gone digital so I think that was so interesting and I think um in that season you know the most interesting thing this I shared with some friends of mine and I told them um it was around the station they decided after December that's when they shut yes but in uh, November just at the end of October I was in a season of prayer and fasting because I had two shows and I'd resigned from one so I'd said my goodbye and what the Lord was telling me by the time you're getting to your third year anniversary on this station you need to leave but then I decided sikuski when I can't hear you yes I know better what do I'm you supposed mean? to be here and that has taught me something about seasons sometimes we hold on to where we at and when God is saying shift You don't want to shift you close your eyes you're like I don't hear. God is saying it's time to move. It might look confusing maybe for a few weeks a few months. But then again when I'm telling you to do that I need you to align with me because I want to open the next door. If that station let me not lie to you. If that station never shut down I would have still been there and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. Because God had to put me in a season of isolation, a season of loneliness, a season of pruning and teaching me and revealing himself to me because by six months by the time it was getting to June That's how I started getting into schools and speaking to students. So you see if one door never shut and God never put me on time out, then that means there's no this version of me who's a transformational speaker. And how I got even into TV. You know sometimes we think we are the ones who are making things happen, but the Lord will use anyone. It doesn't matter religion, but God will use anyone to place you where he needs. Even when your friends, God will use total strangers. Mr. Mima never knew me. So she was like you know me I was actually launching another you know secular song that time I was still in the secular industry Really? Yeah I was still, I was launching one of my songs mm. and um 
when 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 i did the interview mm -hmm. she calls me you know it's interview she was like oh i loved your energy what what we had a good conversation and uh, that was, you know just normal you come to an interview and you leave she calls me a few months down the line and i think this was like almost the next year she's like hi this is mr mima um you came on my show ebru then she was like i have an idea there's a new station and we are, i want to put up a show with a few ladies and there's something about your personality and i love how authentic you are i like yeah. your energy and i feel you could do you could be part of the you know part of the panel and i told her i don't think i can do that i'm only yes. used to being an artist and the only thing i can do is come as a guest on the show mm -hmm. you know and uh, she was like um she saw it so god used her to see something in me so that's why i say it's not even about religion and uh, um when 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 i went you know she was trying to tell me no this is how we can go about it if you think if you f get to a place where you feel like you can't do it it's okay i'll allow you to leave yes. but try mm. it's okay to try so she really encouraged me and she did not know me and um that happened so i ended up being on the show and i became one of the i was a pioneer on the show until the show ended yeah. so there was that because yes. i think i was the only original host to remain mm -hmm. all through as the seasons were changing and mm -hmm. hosts were being changed so that happened and how i got onto tv i say it's god because god used her to place me there not because i was qualified in terms of papers and experience nope not because i was popular nope but it's because god so this version of me but he knew I'll never end up talking yes. if I'm hiding behind the music yes. so getting into tv it gets into a season where I'm a bit confused about now should I be an artist should I be on tv because you're on tv monday to friday and sometimes when as an artist when you're too familiar to people it loses the it factor because if they know where they can watch me every day then it becomes a bit difficult still remaining yes. an artist and keeping up that yes. so god there threw me off so there was a lot of confusion should I do music should I nah should I So when that happened that's when the Lord started working on me. So I got on TV it was like 2 months in. In January the Lord is dealing with me in ways I can't explain. That's when I got saved in January. That's just the first year when I'm starting TV. Yes. Then I backslid. So you can imagine all of these things are happening you're in the public eye. So you're like God this is a good opportunity for me to stay in the world and do the things of the world. Where are you now making me feel uncomfortable? So that happens. So I'm on TV it's like there's this version of me and sometimes i could hear it when i was speaking mm -hmm. and i was like it's like you hear this something different about you how you see things and situations is a bit different but then again i want to put up with the with the persona which i had yeah mimi ni bad girl mimi ni what mimi ni kumake sure manzema chadi watajua ma dem ndo tunarani kitu so in there's me trying to put up with this persona but sometimes there are things that send i'll be like honestly that is who i really am i don't even believe in some of these things yes. which i'm saying but it's a person i'm trying mm. to you know to put up with so there was a lot of that so just getting going in, um you know it was a season of you know sometimes you have highs sometimes there's confusion sometimes i come on tv i'm not sure who i'm supposed to be am i supposed am i supposed to be this bad girl am i supposed to be yeah. this person i feel deep inside god is trying to bath and it was difficult you know surviving through the seasons and also um you know being the person who has a different perception of things like initially when i got in it was more of like already we know how she thinks and she does things but then when the lord is working hapa kwa akili manze mindset may change so na chiki situation kawaida ni they handle na nijibu hivi but there's what god is showing you he's taught you because that time i was still reading the bible but i wasn't vocal about mm. it i was doing it chini ya maji because you see the shame also eh hey, niko tu chini ya maji hata nisoma ngi bible but kumbe the bible is actually coming alive in mm. me so it becomes um in a you're trying to be this person who you are not yeah. and god is like baby girl i'm bathing something mm. in you so that's when i started to understand the bathing process of god is going to make you so uncomfortable you'll feel very confused you'll feel like you don't fit in anywhere but then again that's when he has your full attention because when people don't understand what is happening to you your family doesn't understand your friends don't understand yes. he's the only person who can tell you what is happening yes. so it was a very interesting season you know this new opportunity would have been as secular as they come and I even believe up to date if i had remained secular even now probably I'd still be hosting another show on TV because even one. the opportunities which were coming were very secular mm. and sometimes I would get that temptation of can I just compromise and then stop talking about God a lot of times and just you know do this is a good opportunity good platform bigger platform you know I can do this it's good money Mr. but then again Gwanza. the Lord is telling me who put you on TV in the first place it wasn't I use someone you didn't know the same way you can wake up today and you get a call and that's it 
But then again, sometimes the Lord has to test you and take you through the fire before yeah. you get, you know, in the fire, you either get destroyed or you get um, molded. You, you get molded, you mm. know, you, something else is produced. So just allowing myself to go through those seasons of, um, you know, God, it's okay. This is hard. But I know in the end there's something. So always mm-hmm. looking for the lesson, even when I don't understand what is happening. Yeah. So that was how, you know, TV happened. Mm-hmm. So we wake up one day and um, personally I got the information from my mom. She sent me something that was on, on I think, Facebook or Instagram she found. And she sent it to me. And she was like, eh, what is happening to station? And I'm like, no idea. Where do to make it? I'm seeing it right now. Because I'm one person, I'm, I'm, I may seem very active on social media, but I don't spend a lot of time on social media. Mm-hmm. I don't do the, all the time I'm yes. scrolling and trying to see what is happening and all of that. Yeah. I'm careful about that space because I know how easy it is to be enticed to things which God is not calling you for. And sometimes you're in a, in, a, in a way of, I can do better than. So you start comparing yourself, yet God is not calling you into that direction. You know, there is that. So I tell people, be very careful about what you're allowing into your, you know, even you're consuming online. Yeah. So that that is not station evil. Like, it's like, lo tu me amka una ka una skia ni ni akuna, then una bakuko. Allah, as easy as it came, it's the same way it's gone. So that gave me, and, and those six months, then you got a linea kakwa, your season, your isolation. Sometimes we put our trust in men. We put our trust in careers. We put our trust in um, wow. spaces. We put our trust in opportunities. In what we know. In what we know. Instead of putting our trust in God. Because he says careers can be taken away. We hear people who they have worked for a company for so long. Then yes. all of a sudden, fired. You don't know what happened. Opportunities can go. Spaces can disappear. Companies can collapse. So when you put all your trust in people instead of putting your trust in God. So sometimes, because I think one thing wow. would have happened, the losing of the job would have put me in a state of depression, and of which at some point I was depressed. But if I allowed myself to um, to, to, wallow. Uh, to just wallow in that space and to just loathe and complain, then I wouldn't have given God the time to work on me for him to open the next door. I have no idea where this speaking is going to lead me, but I do believe if I never got on TV, if I never got to speak instead of sing and hide behind the music, you know, it was easy to be like, yeah, but on TV, then I had to like, okay, now I have to speak. Now I have to, you know. I need to watch my exactly. thoughts. And then, you know, I'm like, okay, so I can speak in front of a camera. That's different. Because mm-hmm. you're only used to being in front of a camera when you're like shooting music videos yes. and you're just sleep singing. So there was that. So getting me into that space, it wasn't for me to stay in that space. And I thank God. Kwa sababu ninge kwa nime overstay. I would have overstayed that season. You know, you know this this part mm-hmm. you mentioned. Kai, when your time to exit comes, mm. no matter how much you fight it, yeah. God will cause confusion. God can shut down a company for one person. There you go. At some point, I was telling myself, hey, God, am I that special? <laughs> yeah, you had to move me. Because like I refused to. Because yes. I knew before. But, but I feel like people don't yeah. get, because I, I, I yeah. remember in my previous job, man i procrastinated mm-hmm. for almost one and a half years mm-hmm. every day i was just telling people i gotta leave i gotta leave i gotta <laughs> leave i gotta leave no no you're always leaving yeah. in your in your mind you're always leaving yes. you're always leaving you're yes. always leaving i was like i gotta leave I'm yeah. like, ah, and you cause too much drama about mm. it because you're just looking for someone to tell you no mm. no 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 no. it's okay don't leave me you know yeah. but that day when you just wake up and you don't tell anyone mm-hmm. that's the day that's mm. the day. And when your season comes yeah. to leave, just leave. Mm-hmm. Stop overstaying. I think that is so true. I feel like I would have had that initially. But then again, you know, sometimes even when we make mistakes, the Lord is still going to use yes. that mistake to teach you something else. Yes. But just before I left, um, I, I, I think this was very interesting because later on I came to realize um, sometimes you may think we are to mefika musho, but the Lord is always working. It's the beginning. He's always a step ahead of the devil. Like that is how God works. Yeah. So before I left, we had a new boss and she was an amazing woman. And I was so surprised to know that, you know, she was also a born again. So she actually understood the confusion I was going through. Because even how, you know, being in media, now you're here. She was like, I see you, I understand you. So she spoke to me and she told me, um, don't try to fight the person God is calling you to mm. be, even on the show. And that was just imagine a few months before TV to 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 talk to talk like online to talk like on mainstream. So she told me, 
um, she's called Madame, I call her Madame Simaloi, mm. as in she, she spoke into me and she was like, don't try to fight what God is doing in you. I see it and it's okay. Allow God to work in you. Mm. Don't try to fight and stay yes. the same way. Mm. Have the same mindset when God has taken you mm. out of it. Mm. So she really spoke into my spirit and she was like, whatever is happening to you, it's because God is making a new mm. thing. And I was like, hey, that's refreshing. You know, especially in the media space, when someone affirms that change, especially you coming from a secular space, and she affirms it and she's like, don't fight whatever God is doing. Because I hear it when you're speaking and sometimes it's like you're trying to still go back Shrink. to that, but the Lord is telling you, mm. you are above it. Yes. And she told me, don't try to change what God is doing. If that's how your mind is right now, speak that. Don't hold back because of opinions. Don't speak. And I was like, wow, this is a kingdom woman yes and she really spoke life into me so i found it very interesting as much you know regardless of whether you know the station or whatever happened to the station and they moved digital i really appreciate you know the time i had and the growth and the experience and also just learning um you know the friendships which i built it was just an amazing time Good. and uh, I, I i feel like that was just the beginning of you know yes i'll put you here because i want to show you that i am god i can place you where i need you even now I know wherever God needs me, whatever media house, whatever platform, he's going to place me Amen. there. So I always try to hear God before I make a decision. Because opportunities have come. Yes. I've gotten calls. You know, there's this show, there's that show. But then again, when they don't align with what God is calling me, he tells me, if you decide to take that one, you know you're going back to where mm. you are. But then again, are you patient enough to wait for me to place you where I need you next? Beautiful. You know, sometimes you patient enough? Me, your me, my dad one sister teaches me patience in another level. <laughs> That one she well, teaches me. Is not she easy. teaches me patience yeah. in another level. Yeah. But let's touch on on relationships a bit because mm -hmm. you had one very public relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention the person. But now looking back mm -hmm. and looking, you know, right now, mm -hmm. what are your views on relationship? Mm -hmm. To you right now, what kind of a person? would you want to be or are you with? Mm -hmm. I think the most interesting thing, like I said, when you're in that world, sometimes you have to do things to make sure you're still relevant, you're trending. Kiki metoka, yenda nena mziki. So mm. that was the situation I was in. So it wasn't a relationship. So if I'm honest, it wasn't, it was Nikiki. We are planning a Kiki. So this is working. We are releasing a song. So a lot of times that is what happens. So you see, sometimes you find yourself in spaces, situations, yeah. to relationships. Mm. To you have no business being in just because you're trying to, to stay relevant and to push music. You get what I'm saying? So that happened. And right now when I look back, I feel like my mindset has changed a lot. And I always say, I'm, I'm glad I did not get married earlier on because we'd probably be, you know, going through a divorce. Mm. And, um, you know, I'm a, it just will be very, I don't know, very dysfunctional for lack of a better word. Because yes. there's who I was and I would have picked based on who I was, someone who fit into that version of me. But you see, sometimes God will prolong your journey because it's like, no, I need you to know who you are before you get into that space. So even when you're getting into this space, you already have an identity. Yeah. You know, you already, you already know what I'm calling you to do. Mm. You already know the purpose of you being there. Because mm. I do believe... Um, I know we are living right now in a world where we are, we are, we are saying it's okay to, you know, to nachana, to na trash tokiana, to kisonga, una, una tafta mtu mwingine, munaendelea, mm. mukichokana, to wachane, to whatever, yeah. to kisonga. We are living in a space where I've never been married, but one thing I know is marriage is work. I do believe marriage is work. But then it takes a lot of intentionality, a lot of um, communication, a lot of responsibility, mm. and a lot of self-awareness. Yes. And the thing which I said when we started, a lot of us, we are getting into relationships and some people are getting even into marriages without knowing who they are. So we have this persona which we think works. But then again, how long can you keep up with that persona? So when the wall starts falling and when the mask is starting to come off, then this other person is like, who is this? I did not. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Because we are always trying to put the best foot forward. But if we cannot be authentic with the people, with the people that we love or we are in relationship with, it means that relationship can come down anytime Any it can time. crumble and i feel like this is where we, we get it wrong sometimes we are rushing because our mates are already in mm. me i won't lie to you how many people i know they got married earlier on and uh, they got into and they were like yes 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 you know and a lot of times when you're having conversations it was always with the wrong reasons either they have money either you know uh, they look i nice. love him they look nice we look good together but then again, a few years down the line, Mimi, but I'm yet to get married. I'm not married yet, yet mm. to get married. I do believe I'll get married yes. someday. Yeah. So um, they, they got in, they got out. 
and you're like what happened and it's the same same things which um which at that time they ignored because you see we we live in a generation where we don't want to start with the hard conversations we want to get into a relationship but we want to surface around an eggshell together yes. we are not willing to do the hard work and deal with the issues like what are your traumas who are you really what is your purpose do are you content with the life you have right now because sometimes you meet people in clubs yes in bars and all of that but in at the back of their head they know i can't do this for mm. many more years i need to let this go yes. but have you told the person you're with because maybe them they want that version of you but have you told them i don't think this is something i'll keep up doing i think um I'll, this is just not a lifestyle mm. i want to keep on you know pursuing i want to do things differently are you having the hard conversations exactly but now the problem is we get in because of my feelings then kidogo kidogo ikifika hiyo point ya ku have hard yes. conversations none of us wants to address mm. it and i've come to realize it's not even about you know some people will say um why would you give relationship advice mm. number one ujai kwa kwa relationship tunajua yenye ili work clearly unajua that's what a lot of people will say uh, number two you're not married how do you know the things which people go through when they are married and all of that but i'm like i don't need to go through some things for me to know what i need to do better because we already have people who have done that and they've shared their story and they've told us next if you're trying to get into this be aware yes. do the work before you get into this thing mm. so we already have people who have gone ahead made mistakes and they have taught us so as we are learning why would i close my eyes to things which i know if this is a space i want to get into and i want to have a thriving relationship if i don't if i'm not careful about handling and dealing with these things now this could be a problem and could be the thing that sinks the titanic because yeah. there is that but a lot of us we don't want to yes start there so i say this love is beautiful but love cannot sustain a relationship mm. you wake up one day you no longer love that person do i have capacity to still be in their life do i still see us together That's am deep. i willing to do the work That's so it's deep. not even about i think getting into a relationship is so it's the easiest thing ah, it's the easiest staying in one and sustaining one you're, you're, uh, and just not sustaining sustaining a thriving relationship and a healthy one and a healthy one because right now most of the a lot of friends that i know they're in toxic relationships and they're not willing to let go because they're like you know now how will i start again how what will i lose this beautiful say? place i lose you what 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 but i'm like so it's better for you to tolerate someone they do whatever they want to do with all that dysfunction just because you want to say you mm. are with someone mm. yet i'd really want to be proud of my you know my yes. husband i'd really want to be pr- i don't want to make up stories of how our relationship is working yet it's not working you get i really want to to live a truthful wholesome you know life. marriage and a life like i don't need to go somewhere and pretend oh my my husband is the best he does he does yet clearly at the back of my mind i know he doesn't do any of those things yes. but i'm only putting up a persona but i do believe relationships work but it takes a lot of work and self awareness and that is one thing um i tell young people to do before you get into something understand who you are know who you are yeah. know your purpose because mm. some people can only fit in some relationships only fit in in your current season and a version of you that you are right now but the next version of you they cannot they cannot fit in mm. and they cannot accommodate that person yeah. so there is a lot of that there is are yeah? you proud of yourself are i proud of myself i don't know <laughs> proud is a very it's a hard word yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a big are word are you glad you took this journey i am glad you did I'm the glad work for are, the you, are you glad you're for doing the, highs, the work for the low i'm glad i'm doing the work cuz in all honesty like i said i don't have children yet but someday i'll have children and i'd really want to i really want them to be brought up by a wholesome woman a wholesome mother um a woman who's done the work and i know that's the hardest thing because we have so many and this is the saddest thing as well we have so many parents who are broken and have ended up breaking their children as well so we have so many young people who are broken in so many ways because their parents never did the work so it doesn't what i do it doesn't come from a place of thinking i'm the best or i know it all i don't know it all i am an imperfect person as imperfect as they come but i'm willing to do the work because there are things i know if i don't deal with personally there are issues i know if i don't deal with there are um characters that i have that if i don't deal with there are some beliefs that i have if i don't deal with then my kids will have to pay the price yes. so just being aware that sometimes cuz you see the way we are, like i said i meet a lot of people as i'm doing um you know the speakings and um the motivational talks the transformational engagements talking about mental health and just i meet so many people and when you dig and dig to get to the genesis of the problem family 
It's always the family. Because none of us is born, even the way we were making fun of, you know, the way some people speak. I'm like, none of us is, was born speaking like that. None of us was born doing yes. that. None yes. of us was born being a ratchet human being. Yeah. None of us was born immoral. All of us as babies, even if you have a baby, right? You can get them to work or very innocent. But then where does the dysfunction come from? It's our environment, how we are brought up, the things we hear. If we as parents don't know how to fight, yeah. then our kids remember the things we say to each other. They grow up believing that is how it's supposed to be. So if they never see a healthy relationship, where as parents, tuneza kosana, but we respect each other regardless of what is wrong. And we are like, here's the problem. So how do we deal? But we don't have to call each other names. So many parents are poisoning their children against one of their other parents. So there is a lot of hatred between sons and fathers, sons and um, daughters. and mothers, daughters and mothers, daughters and fathers. fathers. Why? Because the parents are not willing to do the work. They're not willing to let go, forgive and say, it's okay, that person is, as, is so imperfect just like me. Mm. But then again, regardless of what happens, all of us, we belong to the Lord. So I think I got to a place of telling God to help me see people the way he sees them. Because regardless of what they're doing, inside them, there's something good. They just don't know how to get to it. Yes. So I feel like for me, the biggest part of what I'm called to do is to just shed light into those areas and to get people into thinking, by the way, why do I do what I do? Why do I believe what I believe? Even the people who say they don't believe. Um, last week I was speaking um, at an institution and um, one of the uh, students, because um, it's an institution, so it's co like college students. Yes. He was like, you know, um, I believe in myself. So I told him, so you are a God to yourself. And he was like, yes, he believes in him. Then um, I just did a small illustration and I told him, uh, assuming I gave him a poyako for five minutes, Breathe. you'll be die, you'll die. So why would I believe in something that is easy to kill in like less than five minutes? Why would I believe that? Then again, when you say you believe uh, there is nothing out there, well, there has to be a something for you to believe in a nothing. Otherwise, there's no nothing without a something. So I was like, challenge what you think, challenge what you believe in. Then I'm like, if we believe we are, I don't know what, in all honesty, how many friends have died, yet they had plans for their future? Yes. So even being here, it's by grace and mercy. But then it's going to come a time where there's no longer grace and mercy. They'll come that time when the rapture happens, when that happens. And I know a lot of people think all of us will go to the same place. There's no way the Lord will allow good people and bad people. people. People sacrifice to do right, even when they did not want to. Mm -hmm. People decided to forgive, even when they were justified to be, to be mad. You know, sometimes you're justified to be mad and angry and unforgiving. But people were able to let that go, give it to God, and decide, I've forgiven you. This is the worst thing you could have done to me, but I've chosen to let God. I don't want to carry it anymore. There is no way those people will go to the same place with people who do whatever they want to do. Mm, period. There is no way. So whether people believe in a heaven and a hell, there's a heaven and there's a hell. Choose. That's a fact. He gave us the will there's power. There's a narrow road and there's the broad road. Mm. Chagu on ilaku, but Chagu. that's the beautiful thing about God. Yes. Free will given. Yeah. He'll never force you to follow mm. him. I wasn't forced to follow God. But sometimes when you dig to find the truth, what the truth reveals, then you make a choice yeah. whether I believe or I don't believe. Mm. But I tell people my message is not for everyone. I'm not yes. called to everyone. No. There's also understanding that. Mm. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. And that's okay. Yeah, and that's okay, you okay. know. But for those people who understand what I'm saying and those people whose message this for this is uh, this message for today was for, well, you know, take what can help you. Anything God. else which I've said which you don't agree with, let it go. But take what can help you, mm. build you, and help you become a better you. Wow. Yeah. What are we? You just you just found a beautiful way to wind up <laughs> our conversation. <laughs> but I don't want to let you go because yes. I love mm -hmm. love your voice. So Thank could you. you could you maybe sing something that's sing. in your heart for us? Yes. I have anything in my heart? Yes, right you now. do. Uh -huh. If the Lord be for you. Who can be against you? Learn to trust the Lord. Have faith even in the valley. Have faith in the storm. Have faith. Learn to trust the Lord. I love that. So it's only my guess, but I Have think it faith. came from the spirit. But it's, I think my message for today uh, yeah. was just faith. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. It came from That's why I had to tell. It came from I had the, to You ask, had to. Because I had have to nothing ask. to sing. I don't sing my old music because mm. then... Um, yeah. sad songs but mm. yeah and to respect that I was gonna plug in a couple of songs you've sang in the past oh, just put them here in the episode but I'm gonna do away with that because yeah. if they don't make you happy anymore 
no, no you can just do whatever you need to do but the yeah. most important thing is jesus is the way the Amen. truth and the life Amen. you know i don't mind when people you know share show what you're I was okay doing with that before. all right i feel like it's important for people to understand where okay. god can bring you from okay. that's the power of the testimony yeah yeah. It's the power of the testimony. So whatever you want to do okay. is all good. I appreciate you Thank for you coming so much through. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, man. You, as I said, it's only when I took that class, man, me I understood how deep you can <laughs> get. Like, you know, it's the truth. And mm -hmm. also those are not the classes you take if you're not ready for change. Even most people don't even know. Actually, yeah. the classes you're saying right now, what you're saying is that you're going to be in the class. But you see, it's because Cynthia. when you yes. understand, yeah. when you understand your purpose, mm. You'll be in spaces where you won't all this. There are things we don't post about, you yes. know, how we are pursuing purpose and finding ourselves. And those are the most powerful moments that we get to have. Yeah. And pa Pastor Cynthia is a beautiful woman. Yeah. Yani? She's a she's, spiritual she woman. She's, no, she she's, is. she's a beautiful woman. Najua Colleen kujo malize class. I know. Kuja. I know. Hey, God, yeah. Even you I, got that. The first one. So I'm the first time, but I went back yeah, and Even me, I'll go back and finish what I started. <laughs> Maliza's strong. Yes. But I have, strong. And I'll graduate, you know. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah that thing is but not for good. the faint-hearted. Right. It the doesn't amount on of you. inner work you have to do on yeah. yourself, you know. It's a lot. But I appreciate you. Thank you so and much. And I know even in the midst of you just being out and about i know you just came from a journey and you just made time for us i don't take that for granted Thank you. and they already know where to find you on social media oh, yeah. but your youtube channel you are also doing incredible things i don't know why but when god speaks yeah when god i was I gonna know, be I'm like i lot. was gonna be like i don't know why you are not <laughs> like but then again you've just taught me something learn to listen yeah learn sometimes listen. it's important to yes because sometimes we can we can hear ourselves mm. instead of hearing god yeah and sometimes we can hear the whispers of the enemy yeah. instead of hearing God. Yeah. So I do believe in having an ambition that is dri driven by God, okay. not self yes. and not voices, mm. but just having an ambition that is okay. driven by God. Period. Yeah. What part in short do you have for my people? Well, I'm going to say this, you know, life is always going to be happening. You know, mm. life will be lifing at any given time. Yeah. But I feel like it's important for us to know who we are in Christ and to have a solid foundation Um and just base our identity on the word because the word has been tried, tested for years. It's yes. still here. Yeah. Even the people tried to stand against the word. Mm. They died, but the word is still here. So if you can find Jesus, I think that's the best thing you can do to yourself. Let's be more aware of what we allow, yeah. the atmospheres we are in, the things we allow to influence us. But um, all in all, we're here for a very short time, mm. but there's eternity that is waiting. So mm. my prayer is that we'll have you know, we'll just get to a place where we know where we are headed mm -hmm. and uh, we'll choose between the broad road and the, you know, the wide road. Yes. Yeah. We have the willpower. We he have has the given willpower. Us it's that. free will, by the way. The it's thing about will. God is, you know, it's free will. It's free And will. Jesus is always knocking. Yes. That voice that is telling you, no, nope, yeah. don't do that. This yeah. is the way. Yeah. That is Jesus knocking. He's mm. always knocking. He's always speaking. Yeah. So don't harden your heart too hard that you, you, you don't get to hear. And mm. the most important thing, don't be stuck up in who you are or who you are that you don't want to embrace change and you don't want to become better yeah what you're doing is not who you are yeah yeah good i appreciate you once again well, thank, thank you, you so for much. coming through thank you for having me you show. don't need me to wish you all the best <laughs> clearly you're you're well taken care of so as i always tell people when they yeah. come here on the platform go out and conquer Amen. that which god has said you will do go and do it Amen. diligently Amen. go and live your purpose mm. clearly you're living your purpose and yeah. always remember your voice matters and your voice <laughs> lit, it's beautiful <laughs> literally you. your voice is beautiful thank you bless but, the lord for the voice uh, Amina. You know? All right, shall we wrap up? Yeah, Want yeah. Want to have to show leo? Ah, we're going to show leo. Ah, we're going to show leo. 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 Now, mimi nina enda watu wangu. Thank you so much for watching. And I, as I always say on the comment section, what's your take home from today's conversation? We, change. Change is expensive, my people. Staying the same is easy. Changing is expensive and it's hard, you know, but it's worth it. I mean, it's worth it. But Kush, before I let you go, yeah. I find that people always have um, 
not a problem, but mm. a concern arises, especially when you see artists start proclaiming the name of the Lord. Mm. Because to some, it's just clout. It's mm. just kiki. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go do what I need to do in the industry and then go back to my old ways. Mm -hmm. What do you want to say about that? Or everyone's yeah. journey is different. I think everyone's journey. As in, uh, in all honesty, I won't mm. even know about this, mm. but I've met people who are already, like I've met, I've, I've had interactions with people who have been in the so-called gospel e industry and uh, there's a difference between gospel industry and gospel ministry. Yes. I've met people who have been working, serving and laboring in the Lord. But I've met people, the only thing they do is because if they do secular, it's not going to work. So that's why they do gospel music because they know this is where this, this can work and I can make money. Mm. But I've met people um, who, in all honesty, they, they are ministers. Yes. They don't just do music because it's music. They do music because of what God is calling them to do. And yeah. the, the, the anointing in their lives is in their music. So people can be able to be set free, be delivered through their music. So I tell people, be very careful. There are so many people who call them, themselves gospel artists, but the reality is it's all about the fame, the clout, and the name. Mm. It's not about Jesus. Mm. So I can mention Jesus here and there. That's why I say test everyone who tells you about Jesus. Be sure about what exactly they believe in. Because there's the God of money and a lot of people are drawn towards the God yes. of blessings and money. Yes. What of the God who takes you in the value in, a, in isolation? Mm. The God who gets you to your knees where you have nothing but you only have him. Mm. So where? what about that God? Because God is never going to just bless you for you. He needs to bless you so that you can bless other people because his grace comes on men for other men. Mm. So there is that. So I tell people be very careful about that's why I say music is very powerful. The devil was the greatest musician. He's like a walking combination of every hit yes. song you know. So be very careful about what you consider to be entertainment and worship. And if you're soaking yourself in the Holy Spirit, you'll yeah. be able to um, you'll be able to to to, mm. to know. And to feel when something is wrong. Mm. But you have to build intimacy yeah. with God. Yes. It has to, it's a relationship. Jesus is not about religion. It's a relationship. And remember, we don't work for our salvation. We are told to work out. Mm. Meaning you can come to Christ the way you are, but you don't remain the same. Good. If you still have the same ambitions of the world, then there's something that is yes. not happening somewhere. But if you come to Christ, he tells you, work out your salvation, not work for. We don't work. Just because I do what I do and because I've just ministered right now, it doesn't make me special to God. All of us, the Lord loves us the same way. Yeah. I'm not any more special. But then many are called, but a few are chosen. The choosing is now de dependent on, are you going to say yes? yes? Are you willing to pick up your cross yeah. and, walk with, and him? walk with him? Exactly. So it's very different. Yes. But be very careful. Fame, the enemy will give you fame and money and material things. Mm. But the Lord again can bless you because yeah. everything comes from God. Yes. Yeah. Good. Thank you for that. I almost forgot that part. <laughs> and I believe we've gotten what we I, needed to I, hear. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, I believe people have gotten what uh -huh. they needed mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. To Maliza Ikitu. Yeah. Aya, sawa, sawa, my people. I'm going to see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. And as I was saying, I want to know what your take home is from today's conversation on the comment section. Also, if you would want to connect to Tracy, her links are pinned on the comment section below. And they are also on your screen and also to thank our partners of today's conversation kings developers limited you now know what it is if you're looking for an apartment with a credible reliable source guys try kings developers limited get your apartment with them visit them at prism towers don't forget to say that i sent you and also if there is anything you want to talk to me about my email info at lnn.digital or lin.googie at lnn.digital i'm gonna see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m may god bless you Bye bye